If you want to turn a photo into a cool flyer design like this, I'll show you this simple technique in Photoshop. So we're going to begin with our original photo or whatever size document you want. And you're going to put your photo in there. And then the first thing we're going to do is add a gradient map to make it two toned. So I'll go to layer, new adjustment layer, gradient map, just so we have some more flexibility and we're not working directly on the image layer. And I'll take that gradient map layer, I'll put it above the image, and then I can drop down the properties of the gradient map. And you can either just double click on this and create your own. So just taking each color stop and making it whatever color you want. Or you can use some of the preset ones in Photoshop to get ideas. So here's the blues folder. You can just sort of click around and see the different styles. So in my example, I used this one here, blue 20, but there's so many options for you. I just like the similar sort of faded look of these light blues. But again, you can adjust any of these gradients. You can adjust the points to be closer together, or you can adjust to have multiple points even if you want. So. You have a ton of flexibility here in the gradient editor. And you can always delete color stops or move the midpoint and such. So once I have my two-tone look, then I want to add a little bit of vintage texture to it. And I'm gonna do this by adding a photo layer. So you can actually take a picture of a crumpled piece of paper or a wall, or what I've done is I've gone to a stock image website and I've just found a pic a, a texture photo so this just looks like a photo of some paper or something like that and i've dragged it onto my composition so this happens to be a similar size but if not you can always press command t and you can adjust the size and positioning and rotation to be however you want it to be and also on this texture layer you can adjust the contrast and levels of it as well so if i go to image adjustments levels I can adjust the contrast of this layer. So how dark or gray it is. I can raise the range of the output. So maybe I just want it to be sort of in the, this gray section and not have any harsh black in there. And you can also adjust the saturation of this as well. So if it has color within it already, you can go to image adjustments, hue saturation and desaturate this image or adjust the lightness of it. So you just have flexibility over the texture. Now, since this was dragged in as a smart object, it adds all of those adjustments as smart filters. So I can always hide them or double click on them and change them again and tweak them. And if you, yours is not a smart image or object, you can always right click on it and convert it to a smart object before you start doing that. So now that I have this layer, I can play around with the blending mode of it. So some cool blending modes to try could be multiply or lighten or screen. The screen will show through the lighter parts of the image, whereas multiply will show through the darker parts. You could even just lower the opacity and just keep it on normal. So this looks pretty cool just on normal. And if you want, you can see what it looks like on top of the gradient map layer or underneath it. So underneath the gradient map layer will keep things a little bit more uniform and two-tone. I kind of like it on top of the gradient map layer in this case. It adds a little bit more washed out retro look for me. And then lastly, we can add some text or shape layers onto this. So I'm gonna grab my type tool and I'll just use a clean, simple font, something like Helvetica or Arial. This is where it's up to you to look for cool fonts or find something that fits the style that you want. But what's gonna look nice against our faded two-tone color that we chose is a nice bold white font. So I'm gonna just type out some random word. I'll type out start and I'll increase the size of this a lot. And if that's taking too long, you, know, you can always press Command T and open up the transform box here. So I've got this word here and that looks pretty cool. And I noticed I've got this sort of this whole area of negative space that's sort of dark shadows in contrast to her face that I can try to fill up. If I double click my text layer, it'll highlight it and I can always adjust certain things about it. So the character and paragraph panel here, I can increase or de decrease the tracking if I wanna bring the letters closer together or further apart 
or make them italic or something like that. But one little trick I can use here is I will just duplicate this layer. So I'll press Command J and then I'll move over with the Move tool and I'll hold Shift to keep it aligned and I'll make another duplication of that. So I'm using the arrow keys just to get that last bit of separation. And maybe I'll do this three times. So I've got these repeated text effect and I can highlight all of the layers by holding shift and move them all together. And I can also press command T and adjust all of their sizes together. If you ever just press command and then click on a layer, it'll cycle through which one you want to highlight. So I actually want to highlight this middle one. I'll maybe use my arrow keys just to get the balance between all of them right. And let's say I add a cool little effect on here where I make it an outline look. So I'll go to the blending options. I'll right click, go to blending options. I'll add a stroke on this layer. And under the blending options tab, I'll lower the fill opacity all the way to zero. So we have this white stroke, creating a bit of an alternate fill, stroke, fill, repetition. You can, you can change the position to be inside or outside or center. And you can change the thickness of it or the color of it. But I'll press OK there. And maybe even another cool idea would be to fill in the ART to make it like a start art or something. I'm just improvising. So one way I could do that is duplicating this layer, turning the fill back on, but then just deleting the ST. And this works because it's right justified. If it was center or left justified, then I might have to move it over manually, which I can do. And notice I'm using the arrow keys a lot, just my pixel arrow keys. This is even kind of a cool effect with a, a little bit not aligned, but this is what this might look like. Maybe I can even change the color of this one to be a blue from the image or no, I don't know. That doesn't look that good, but you get the idea. You can experiment here and try different things. Maybe I can even create a new layer and add a little border on everything. So maybe I'll add a white stroke on the inside, maybe 10. That's what that would look like. Or maybe I can go to select, modify, contract it, and make sure I have apply effect at canvas bounds checked on. And then maybe I can stroke this little inner border outline thing and create something like that. That's just a another sort of technique tip that I could put in there. But basically you can use this idea of a two-tone gradient map with a photo texture on a blending mode or opacity with some nice bold text on top to create some designs and posters and flyers of your own or graphics of your own. Here's what it might look like. I can even just drag another photo underneath this. And here's what it might look like with just another photo. So my name is Justin Odisho. If you enjoyed this Photoshop tutorial, you can check out hundreds of more on the playlist on my channel and subscribe to stay tuned for all of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.